welcome back again in the next video of this series today we are going to cover CIT 450 Salesforce certified platform developer first PT1 questions and answers part 14 if you like this content please subscribe our channel to find the complete list of questions and answers please go to the playlist link provided in the description let me know if you have any questions now let's begin the question is a recursive transaction is initiated by a DML statement creating records for these two objects. First, accounts. Second, contacts. The account trigger hits a stack depth of 16. Which statement is true regarding the outcome of the transaction? Option A. The transaction fails and all the changes are rolled back. Option B. The transaction succeeds as long as the contact trigger stack depth is less than 16. Option C. The transaction fails only if the contact trigger stack depth is greater or equal to 16. Option D. The transaction succeeds and all changes are committed to the database. Correct answer is option D. Next question is. A developer at Universal Containers is tasked with implementing a new Salesforce application that must be able to to be maintained completely by their company's Salesforce administrator. Which three options should be considered for building out the business logic layer of the application? Choose three. Option A. Process Builder. Option B. Scheduled Jobs. Option C. Invocable Actions. Option D. Workflows. Option E. Validation Rules. Correct answer is option A, D and E. Next question is Universal Containers wants to back up all the data, all of the data and attachments in its Salesforce ORG once a month. Which approach should a developer use to meet this requirement? Option A. Define a data export schedule job. Option B. Use the data loader command line. Option C. Schedule a report. Option D. Create a schedulable Apex class. Correct answer is option A. Our next question is, which exception type cannot be caught? Option A, limit exception. Option B, no access exception. Option C, a custom exception. Option D, call out exception. Correct, correct answer is option A. Our next question is, universal containers are stores the availability date on each line item of an order and orders are only shipped when all of the line items are available. Which method should be used to calculate the estimated ship date for an order? Option A. Use a latest formula on each of the latest availability date fields. Option B. Use a ceiling formula on each of the latest availability date fields. Option C. Use a days formula on each of the availability date fields and a count rollup summary field on the order. Option D. Use a max rollup summary field on the latest availability date fields. Correct answer is option D. Next question is Universal Containers has an order system that uses an order number to identify an order for customers and service agents. Order records will be imported into Salesforce. How should the order number field be defined in Salesforce? Option A. Direct lookup. Option B. Lookup. Option C. Number with external ID. Option D. Indirect lookup. Correct answer is option C. Coming to the next question, a developer needs to have records with specific field values in order to test a new Apex class. What should the developer do to ensure the data is available to the test? Option A. Use SOQL to query the ORG for the required data. Option B. Use anonymous Apex to create the required data. Option C. Use test load data brackets and reference a CSV file. Option D. Use test.loaddata brackets and reference a static resource. Correct answer is option D. Our 
Our next question is which two statements are true about getter and setter methods? Choose two. Option A. Setter methods always have to be declared global. Option B. Setter methods are required to pass a value from a page to a controller. Option C. There is no guarantee for the order in which getter or setter methods are executed. Option D. Getter methods can pass a value from a controller to a page. Correct answer is option B and C. Next question is What is the benefit of developing applications in a multi tenant environment? Option A Access to predefined computing resources. Option B Enforced best practices for development. Option C Unlimited processing power and memory. Option D Default out of the box configuration. Correct answer is Option B. Next question is, a developer needs to confirm that a contact trigger works correctly without changing the organization's data. What should the developer do to test the contact trigger? Option A. Use deploy from the VS Code IDE to deploy and insert contact Apex class. Option B. Use the new button on the Salesforce contacts tab to create a new contact record. Option C. Use the open execute anonymous feature on the developer console to run an insert contact DML statement. Option D. Use the test menu on the developer console to run all test classes for the contact trigger. Correct answer is option D. Stay tuned for many more videos like this. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Thank you.